Hillman, Mike Beer, race number nine at Belmont Park on Saturdays for the Sprinters. It's the grade three run happy. $175,000 is the purse. Let's take a look at this field. It's not the biggest field in the world, Mike, with only six. But as you can see from our colleague David Aragona's morning line, it is a very evenly matched group. Yeah, and I, that's how I looked at it, too. I mean, it's just it, it feels like there's not that one horse that stands out in here. Um, it kind of feels like trips will be pretty important in this race, Dan. But um, well, there are cases to be made for all six of these horses. One of the pace setters in this race, according to Time Form US, is a horse in razor sharp form coming up from Parks. That's the number three twisted ride for trainer Mike Moore. This horse has won four consecutive races. Candyman Rocket draws outside, gives him a little bit of an option not to exactly have to go to the lead. Personally, I think Mr. Phil's going to try to be on ascend, and I wouldn't be surprised if Mr. Phil makes the lead. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. The pace to me was pretty hard to discern in this race. That I think you know the, the pace projector maybe has it right. I think all three of those horses could certainly be up there. Twisted Ride, I mean, he's not a blazer, but he wants to be forward. Certainly, Mr. Phil um, could make the lead here. He's certainly faster than he showed in his most recent. He's already wired that field off the layoff, Dan, but that was a super slow pace. Um, he is capable of going faster if he has to. I thought Candyman Rocket was more of a stalker. I didn't see him being involved in the pace. But what about the two Baron? I mean, that horse is drawn towards the inside. Isn't he fast enough to make the lead if they wanted to get there? It really all sort of depends on how he breaks because every once in a while, mm -hmm. Baron is not that sharp from the start. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with him. The last time they got him up and on the pace, even though he was against inferior competition, he buried a field with a career best buyer. So that's a very good point. The horse with the best late pace rating from Time Form US is the number one. That is drafted. And drafted Mike won this race last year from off the pace. And if you give him something to run at, he'll come with a kick he won this race coming off a dull effort in the carter he's coming into this race off a tom fool handicap in which he really didn't fire yeah he didn't run his best race there i didn't to me didn't really have a fair chance either caught a wet track there um, and i think you want to be a little give him a little leeway for that then you see his overall record on wet tracks he's won on it before but he's won on a wet harrow track he's never really won run that well on a wet sealed track which that one was last time and he just couldn't get involved there after getting way too far away early. Par to, prior to that, I thought he, this horse was in great form. He obviously needs a little bit of pace to set him up here. But to me, he's plenty good enough to beat a field like this one. I think this is a great spot for this horse. I thought he ran just fine in that toboggan two starts back, a race in which Repo Rocks just freaked out. Again, he was near the back, but he was running on at the end, and he got third. And the Tom Fool, you might be right. That wet track could have worked against him. He was in against a horse that came back and ran third in a restricted stake at Laurel with a 91 buyer. Barron's been one of the better mid-Atlantic-based sprinters uh, for a long time for trainer Butch Reed. He's been in the exact in, what, 18 or 27s, banked over 600,000, and he just missed last time out to twisted ride uh with him a lot of it is about the break sometimes he will break slowly but maybe being down inside in the page mckinney last time out worked against him that's a good point that you made though dan that he's not he hasn't always been the greatest gate horse and i think that was part of his problem last time in the page mckinney he just didn't get out of the gate that sharply and he did wind up down inside and behind twisted ride there i still didn't think he ran a great race there, but uh, he was trying hard to the end. He was obviously better two starts back. I like him as a horse. I think he can win this race, but he's really, you know, not the kind of horse I'd want to be betting as the favorite, I don't think. Twisted Ride did win the Page McKenney, and it was a really strong race for Pennsylvania Breds. He had the best Pennsylvania Bred sprinters in that field, and Twisted Ride got it done. He showed speed in here. I've talked to trainer Moore before about this horse, and he says he just likes competition, and he feels that maybe once Twisted Ride put away the other pace and made the lead, he started looking around a little bit. Uncle Ernie on the outside, Baron down towards the rail. Twisted Ride is just going to hold on. His race two starts back, he kind of got banged around on the back stretch a bit was forced to rate then came around horses and won so he's versatile and he's sharp and because these are parks based connections this horse might go off a playable price yeah i saw those same things too um it, it, I, I do like him maybe shortening up a little bit for this race i think that can help him and i do like his tactical speed um so maybe there's a good trip coming i won't knock his recent form he's obviously won four in a row he's looked pretty good in those races 
Um, I just don't love him in here, Dan. I didn't really feel like he had to fall into some kind of great trip in this race. And I personally feel like he has to run even better than he's been running recently if, if he's going to beat this field. Although Candyman Rocket won the grade three Sam F. Davis early on the 2021 Triple Crown Trail, I think you and I have always felt that he was going to be at his best sprinting. And most of his races, sprinting have been very good, except the last one. What happened in the Count Fleet sprint last time out? I know he caught a horse that I think people should start to think about a little bit in terms of being one of the better sprinters in the country. That horse came back to win with a 98 buyer speed figure at Oaklawn, but it's not like Candyman Rocket was threatening that one. Yeah, he didn't run at all last time. I'm with you. That's a it's a it's a race that you definitely have to reconcile if you want to go back to him in here because he just didn't show up. And maybe there was an excuse for it, maybe not, Dan. Obviously, his prior three races uh, sprinting, actually his prior four, because even in the Gold Fever way back when as a three-year-old, he ran pretty well that day when Barron just got him. Um, his prior three races were good, though. I just, I don't know. I, I, I kind of want you to talk about him a little bit more because he gets good trips in his races. He's fine. I just personally, I don't think this horse is that good. And, and I think he's going to take a lot of money in here. Well, I think the key is he lacks that sort of big victory other than the Sam F. Davis. And sprinting, you're going to see him. It's not going to be any sort of explosive moves. He gets it done against allowance horses. Now we're going to have yeah. to see him do it against stakes competition. His tactical speed, as you mentioned, might be his greatest asset. He shouldn't be too far away when they turn into the stretch. Stage left is next. And stage left got a little lucky last time out in Maryland when the King T. Leatherberry was washed off of the turf. This field was not stakes quality, more of a high level allowance quality once it was washed off. Stage left ran a stakes class figure, a 92 buyer speed figure, getting a decent three wide trip off of a moderate pace. Yeah, things kind of worked out for him here, you know, catching the right kind of a field. Um, but he did get bumped at the start, Dan, and it sort of left him sort of maybe a little further back than he wanted to be. Still ran a pretty nice race to close it down. At the end, I thought he actually ran maybe just as well two starts back. Mr. Phil beat him that day. But again, that was a super slow pace. And this horse got away towards the back and had to make a big run coming wide to the stretch. He still almost got there. I think Jacobson has him in good, good form. I've always liked him. I've never thought he was a stakes horse, but I do like his last two races. The number six is Mr. Phil, and you talked about him beating stage left last time out, and you're right. He got away with a very easy lead when dangled in for the $80,000, and stage left did very well to make up a lot of ground in a couple of strides after the wire. He was past Mr. Phil. Mr. Phil is another one, though. Is he really a stakes-quality horse? We've seen him run some very big races in optional claimers, in high-level allowance races. Now he's got to do it perhaps with some other speed to his inside, against tougher company. Right, gonna have to prove it against some better horses here. Um, the good news for Mr. Phil is, Dan, it does feel like he's certainly taken steps forward since Atris claimed him for 32,000 early last year. And as easy as he had it last time um, in, in holding on in that race, that was a pretty long layoff he was returning from. Um, so there's a chance that he could take a step forward here. He's just not the kind of horse I wanted to go back to in here, but. I mean, he, he did run a couple of races last year for actors that would give him a real chance in this race. Expecting him to be really sharp out of the gate from the outside post. Top pick time for the run happy. It's a nice card at Belmont on Saturday. Mike's going with drafted. He's hoping for the pace to be fast. And if you go back to his race, two starts back. If you go back to his run happy last year, if you go back to several of his races, he has them and they're good enough to beat this field. That's how I looked at it. And I think this is a great spot for this horse. Obviously, he's going to need something to run at in here. But I, I love this spot for this horse. And I didn't think he'd be the favorite. That was enough for me. I think the pace will be solid. I think stage left will be coming from mid-pack. I think draft will be coming from the back of the pack. And I think they're going to get the right flow. Stage left's a, a well-bred horse that never really panned out. Jacobson seems to have gotten them good right now. That last race was solid enough from a buyer standpoint. And the odds are good on the morning line. One, two, five, four for Mike, five, one, six, four for me. It's the grade three run happy, maybe a potential prep race for the true north in three weeks on Belmont Stakes weekend. Good luck.